Hello, my name is Rick Pearson. Welcome to Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. Last week, we talked about six types of believers that would be found in the last days. However, the seventh group of believers, known as the Church of Philadelphia, is the one group that has a blessing coming from God that no generation has ever received. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss learning about one of the greatest mysteries in Scripture that could be very well fulfilled within our generation. Welcome back. Throughout our programs, we've been discussing the seven types of believers that would be found in the last days. And because Babylon the Great is the last kingdom to appear before the new world order begins, and because Scripture tells us that God's people are in Babylon, we can easily surmise that these seven types of believers obviously will exist in Babylon. We've also discussed that out of the 40 or so descriptions so far found in Scripture concerning Babylon the Great, the United States of America is the only country in the history of the world who has met those descriptions. In other words, to identify these seven groups of believers, we have to not only look in the world, but specifically within North America to see what category we personally fit in. But why should we care? Because Jesus warned us that certain sins would void believers' chances of being spared a great tribulation. Now, those sins are as follows. The church of Ephesus lost their first love towards God. The church of Sardis was involved in good works, but not God's works. The church of Pergamos had believers who were involved in sexual immorality outside of holy matrimony. Likewise, the church of Thyatira had church leadership similar to Jezebel, leading them into Babylonian religions. And finally, Laodicea were believers that would be blessed financially, but were selfishly not using their finances to help others in need. Of course, the church of Smyrna was a persecuted church, whom Jesus said, hold steady, for you will be rewarded shortly. However, the seventh group of believers had avoided all the shortcomings of the first six churches, and they met the criteria for being a true disciple of Christ. The name of this group is the Church of Philadelphia. Now, Jesus warned all six groups of believers that unless they change their ways, they could lose the blessing that awaits the Church of Philadelphia. And that blessing would take place within a one-hour time period. In other words, it would come very suddenly. To further explain this blessing, listen to this. To the Church of Philadelphia, Jesus says, I know your works. Behold, I have set before you an open door, which no man can shut. I know that you have but little strength, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Because you have kept the word about patient endurance, I will keep you from the hour of tribulation that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. It appears that the Philadelphia believers are differentiated from all the other churches previously mentioned. It does appear, however, that these believers will suffer some persecution from the synagogue of Satan. In other words, they have been tested even to the point that Jesus said, I know that you have but little strength. If you stand up for traditional marriage, you are called homophobic. Against Muslim terrorism, you are called Islamophobic. If you stand up for Israel, you are called apartheid racists. If you stand up for the life of the unborn, you are accused of having a war on women. If you believe Jesus is the only way to salvation, you are accused of being a narrow-minded bigot. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, 
Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets before you. God will judge you based on what you know and how you put into practice what you have been taught. The more you know, the greater your accountability to obey his words. Welcome back. Wow, did you know that to whom much is given, much is required? And what does that mean to us in North America? A nation founded upon biblical principles, a nation blessed by God to become the richest nation in the history of the world, the most technically advanced, highly educated civilization in the history of mankind, and a place where God's word is preached 24 seven over the internet, the radio, the television, just think of this program alone. Are you listening on television, on your computer, perhaps in your car or even in the palm of your hand with a handheld mobile device? If so, what is God speaking directly to you in these verses? Did you know that there are nations today where you can be put in prison for even having a Bible? And we have apps in North America that will literally read you the Bible. You don't even have to read the Bible yourself. We have technology that will literally give you the spoken word of God, and yet the majority of people in North America are totally clueless that they're living in the last providential nation on earth before a godless new world order comes into power. Now, according to what we've just studied concerning the seven churches in Revelation, those who have heard the word will be judged more harshly if you're just a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word. However, if you hear and do the word, in these last days, there is a great reward or an open door awaiting the church of Philadelphia that no other generation has ever been given. But what exactly is that open door? And what specifically does that have to do with us living in North America? In Revelation 3.10, we see a specific time correlation between the open door and the hour of tribulation that will come upon the whole earth. You may remember that we already have studied that the Lord warned the believers in Babylon the Great in Revelation 18, 4, come out of her, my people, and be not partakers of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. Remember also, Amos said, surely the Lord will do nothing unless he reveal it unto his servants, the prophets. Now, obviously, this scripture, Revelation 3.10, is warning us of something coming that has been shown John as he prophesies about the end time. Specifically, it would appear by scripture that in one hour, everything on the earth would change dramatically on one hand, a great deliverance for the believers of Philadelphia would take place, but on the other hand, great tribulation would come upon the earth in one hour. Let's first talk about the tribulation that is coming. This one hour time sequence is mentioned several times in the book of Revelation, and the angel specifically ties it into the judgment of Babylon the Great. Revelation 14, 7 says, And he said with a loud voice, the angel, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And then in verse 8, another angel declares, Babylon has fallen, because she made all the nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Now, three chapters later, another angel talks about a ten-nation new world order coming into power, and it will be completed within one hour. Revelation 17, 12 says, And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. And the ten horns that you saw, they will hate Babylon the great, and they will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out His purpose by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. 
Revelation 18.8 says, Therefore her plagues, meaning Babylon the Great, shall come in one day, death, mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burnt with fire. Revelation 18.10 says, The merchants will stand afar off in the fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, you great city, you mighty city Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. Revelation 18.17 says, For in a single hour all this wealth has been laid waste, and all the shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors, and all those who trade on the sea stood afar, afar off. Isaiah 47 verse 9 says, These things shall come upon Babylon the great. In one day, loss of children and widowhood, the fire shall burn them, and the merchants shall wander away, none shall save thee. From all these verses, we can correlate four specific things that the angels have told us concerning the hour of tribulation. In Revelation 14, 7, in one hour, a major judgment will be released by God. Revelation 17, 12, in one hour, the ten kings will be given power together with the Antichrist to form the new world order, who we are told hates Babylon the Great. In Revelation 17, 16, 18, 10, 17, and Isaiah 47, 9 through 10, in that same one hour, these same kings, ten kings, will carry out God's purpose to burn Babylon the Great with fire. However, in Revelation 3.10, in one hour, God has a plan to deliver His chosen ones by utilizing an open door to keep them from the hour of tribulation that shall come upon the earth. Now, we've determined what the hour of judgment is concerning Babylon the Great. But what is the mystery of the open door? Stay tuned. You don't want to miss what God has planned for those last day believers in Babylon who diligently seek His face. Four thousand years ago, an antichrist religion was birthed in ancient Babylon. Yet Joshua overcame it, Gideon overturned it, Elijah overwhelmed it, and Josiah overthrew it. This vile religion demands a rejection of God's commandments, a defiance of God's morals, a resurgence of asterisk poles with rampant immorality, and the shedding of innocent blood that cries out for judgment. These are the signs of a nation seduced by Baal worship. But what is the answer? 2,000 years ago, innocent blood was shed for you. But will America come back? Will she seek God's forgiveness or will she suffer His judgment? Prophecy USA proudly presents a study guide addressing America's spiritual state of the union concerning her past, present, and future role in Bible prophecy. Call right now with your donation of $20 or more to receive your copy, 1-888-306-1759, or go online to prophecyusa.org right now. Welcome back. We've had some intensive insights about the hour of tribulation that will not only come upon Babylon the Great, but it will affect the whole world. Now those insights are extremely sobering and even frightening as you realize that the Bible does not fool around when it comes to fulfilling prophecy. However, as we learned in previous programs, the God we serve is a good God, and He wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health even as our soul prospers. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And in that promise, we can be assured that what Ezekiel spoke 2,500 years ago in historical Babylon is the same that he speaks to us today in Babylon the Great. Ezekiel 33 reads, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die? Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. And what is that expected end? Jesus, your personal prophet, said in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. 
for in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Now from this perspective, it's clear that God has a way of escape for those who choose His ways. And the open door in Revelation 3.10 is the mystery from which He will provide your escape from the tribulation that is sure to come to Babylon the Great and literally be spread around the world. In Luke 17.29, He said, But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken, the other shall be left. Two men shall be in the field. One shall be taken, the other left. Notice here Jesus is not talking about His second coming that takes place at the War of Armageddon which successfully ends the seven-year tribulation period. In this parable, he says he will be revealed, but he emphatically, emphatically states that not everyone is going to see him, nor will they be taken. He also compares that day to be likened unto the day Lot came out of Sodom and it rained fire upon the earth. In other words, it was a day of judgment where some were delivered and others were not. In Matthew 25, he gives us another parable concerning uh, those people who would miss his coming. In this parable, there were 10 virgins who were waiting for the bride, bridegroom to come. Six had oil, or five had oil in their lamps and five did not. When the bridegroom showed up in the middle of the night, the five brides who had no oil left to buy some and they literally missed their own marriages because when they finally got ready, Jesus said the bridegroom was gone. Now the open door blessing that comes to certain believers is further explained in 1 Thessalonians 4.16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15.52 says, For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy victory? And grave, where is thy sting? This group of believers, the Church of Philadelphia, will be just like Elijah, who was caught up in a chariot, taken to heaven, and just like Enoch, who was walked with God and was not. They are the bride of Christ that will never taste death. This group fulfills the warning Jesus gave us in Luke 21, 36 regarding the rapture. He said, Watch ye therefore and pray that you might be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. And that escape will take place at the one hour initiation that begins the seven year tribulation period. One of the most glaring examples pinpointing the specific time sequence of the rapture happens after the rapture takes place. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss this teaching on the specific time sequence that unlocks the mystery of the open door and its direct correlation with the United States of America. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, for He raises up kingdoms and He deposes kingdoms. But what about America? The most prolific nation in the history of mankind, the most productive nation to ever exist, the most powerful military that has ever been created with the most advanced technology known to man. 
circling the globe, monitoring the airwaves, dominating the internet. Not since man's first breath has any nation achieved such greatness. But is this Lady of Kingdoms in the Bible? Have past generations foretold of her existence? Prophecy USA is proud to present their latest study guide providing over 50 biblical references describing the past, the present, and the future of this great nation. Joining the dots that unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. To order your copy of the Prophecy USA study guide, call 1-888-306-1759 or go to prophecyusa.org. Call today. Welcome back to Prophecy USA. We've just studied a multitude of verses describing the hour that changes the world as we know it. In one hour, 10 kings will form an alliance with Antichrist and initiate the new world order. In one hour, a fiery judgment will be released upon Babylon the Great, allowing that new world order to begin its seven year reign. In one hour, an open door will provide an escape rope for a chosen generation of believers. In the twinkling of an eye, they will fulfill one of the greatest mysteries in scripture by literally defying death. But how are we sure of the time sequence in uniting the open door rapture with the destruction of Babylon the Great, which we've already determined is quite possibly the United States of America? After Revelation 18 describes the destruction of Babylon, the following chapter provides all the evidence that demands a verdict. Revelations 19.1 says, After these things, after the destruction of Babylon, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. For true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged Babylon the great, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Now, in this verse, it specifically shows us that the marriage supper of the Lamb will not take place until Babylon the Great is judged, and that judgment will take place in one hour, the exact same hour of tribulation that will come upon the earth, and the exact hour when the bride of Christ escapes through the open door that, as Jesus promised the believers, of Philadelphia, they were counted worthy to escape. And it should be noted that this verse also confirms that the bride made herself ready. Remember, Jesus said to pray that you might be counted worthy to escape the coming tribulation. Eternal salvation is a gift from God, offered to you freely by the death and resurrection of Jesus' works on the cross, not of our works, lest any man should boast. However, to be counted worthy to escape through the open door and literally defy death is a totally different initiative. Revelation 19, 7 continues to say, For the bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine white linen, or the white robe, is the righteous deeds of the saints. In historical Babylon of 600 BC, we have the story in Daniel chapter three, how King Nebuchadnezzar tested three young Hebrew boys because they would not bow to his golden image. So he cast them into a burning fiery furnace. Now apparently this King Nebuchadnezzar, who ruled in the region of present day Iraq, had a barbaric ideological religion that declared if you don't worship my God, you're an infidel and will suffer death by being burned alive in a burning fiery furnace. Now Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were three Jewish believers out of thousands living in Babylon at the time who would not bow. They were thrown into the furnace to be literally burned alive, but God miraculously delivered them. And according to Daniel 3.25, a fourth man appeared in the flames, and to the king's utter astonishment, he said, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the furnace? 
But lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth man is like the Son of God. The greatest miracle that ever happened in ancient Babylon could be a prophetic foreshadowing of the rapture of the bride, which will happen in latter-day Babylon, as well as around the world. Remember, the same spirits that rose during the time of ancient Babylon are rising again within current Babylon the Great. And just as Nebuchadnezzar was spiritually manipulated to cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the midst of a burning fiery furnace, the spirit of Antichrist and his ten-nation coalition will be spiritually manipulated to press some buttons and cast certain sections of this planet into a burning fiery furnace, specifically targeted at the United States of America. But just as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were delivered from the flames, God will miraculously deliver the bride of Christ from the conventional weapons of modern warfare. The flames will have no power over your body, neither will a hair of your head be singed. For behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall be changed. Instantly, in the twinkling of an eye, this mortal will put on immortality, and this corruptible body will put on incorruption. A trumpet will sound, the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive shall behold him. The fourth man shall appear again in the fiery furnace of Babylon's destruction, and only his chosen will take part in the first resurrection. That first resurrection began over 2,000 years ago. Matthew 27, 52 says, For behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two, from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were open and the saints who had fallen asleep were raised and came out of their tombs immediately after this resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says, For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive, but each in his own order. Christ the firstfruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. So get ready, America, because something good is about to happen to you who believe. Get your house in order, make Christ first in your life, participate in the works of his kingdom, give the first fruits of your financial blessings to those who are in need. You know, when the rain descended down on Noah's family, Noah's family ascended up. When the fire came in on Lot's family, Lot's family came out. And when the flames come down on Babylon the Great, the bride will go up. For he has spoken it, he will also do it, he has purposed it, and he will bring it to pass. So let the poor say you're rich, and let the weak say we're strong. Because this battle's already over, and we win big time. This is Prophecy USA. My name's Rick Pearson, reminding you that Jesus is alive, and he's coming back much sooner than many people think. We'll see you next week. Shalom.